All right, everybody, welcome back to Fairwinds RV. My name is still Jeremy, and today we are going to talk about the campground pedestal and how to test it when you pull in, and we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna get to it right now. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna walk you through the process of checking the campground pedestal when you pull in, checking the electric part of the campground pedestal when you pull in. Um, we're gonna walk through some basic, uh, just visual inspections, and then we're gonna test um, each of the outlets. And then we're gonna plug in our surge protector um, to verify that there are no electrical issues that we didn't identify with our inspection. And then we'll go ahead and plug the cord in, go inside and shut the breakers, and then that'll be the end of it. And we'll be all done. We know that we've got a, a safe pedestal to connect to, and it's not going to either cause us harm or do any damage to our rig. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so, so Candace is here with me because we're gonna, we're gonna kind of knock three things out here, I think. We're gonna, um, we're gonna show you how to do all these initial checks um, when you, uh, pull in and you connect up to the pedestal. And something very important is that both people, especially if you're a married couple, uh, should be able to do everything inside and outside with their rigs. Um, because, you know, if something happens, let's say I have a heart attack and, you know, I, you know I'm in the hospital, uh, she has to move the rig or whatever, um, it's important that she knows how to do these things or maybe not so, you know, so drastic as a heart attack, but even if I'm just sick, um, she's, she needs to be able to do uh, what I can do or at least have seen it before so she can work her way through it and vice versa I need to be able to do the things that she does inside absolutely so those are the first two we're going to show you how to do this um, it's going to get her uh, familiar with all of um, uh, all of these actions so not only are we talking about how important it's both for uh, both people but this is actually going to be her experience on doing this she's never done it before so uh, we're going to knock out three birds with one stone here I think if she is able to remember it after we're done <laughs> all right so let, let's get started all right, go ahead and co go down here. Get in the spot where you're comfortable. Assume the position. All right, while she's getting ready, uh, again, we're gonna uh, walk through just a visual inspection of these breakers and, and outlets. Then we're gonna do a little test on them. Uh, we're gonna get a, a, a multimeter out here um, to test them. And then, like I said, we'll hook everything up and then go back inside and shut the breakers. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do here is basically just do a visual inspection and a kind of a touch inspection on all the outlets and all we're looking for here guys is that um, that they're not burned up um, they don't have any charred marks on them and to make sure that there's no bugs in them i've seen these with ants just come rolling out of them uh, make sure there are no wasp nests or anything in there and then to make sure that they're not you know moving around too much okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dry operate all of the breakers so we're just Basically gonna turn them on, right? Make sure that they snap real firm into place and they're not feeling spongy um, and to make sure that they don't wobble around too much. So if you get one of these breakers, when you go to close it, if it, if it comes up and it just kind of feels spongy or it doesn't just feel like it's locked into place, um, it may be okay, but it also may be an indication that that breaker is about to fail. And you might wanna talk to the campground about that. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take a multimeter. Um, this one, they make all types of multimeters. Um, this is kind of a more professional one. You don't need anything this fancy, uh, but this is just an example. And I'll show another example here in just a minute of, of another type of multimeter. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this multimeter on to the AC voltage position. There are two different voltage positions. Well, there's really three, but we're looking at the AC voltage position here, not the DC, but the AC voltage position here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna verify that we're getting the right voltages uh, where we need them to be. So the first thing we'll do here is we're, we're gonna test the 50 amp outlet. So we'll go ahead and turn on the 50 amp breaker. And then we're gonna test each of these terminals. So we have the two hot, um, if you remember back from the last video, the two hot legs are coming in here. We have a neutral and then we have a ground. So let's go ahead and test between the, um, the first hot leg and the neutral. And what we see here is we've got about, go ahead, uh, we've got about 123 volts, so that's good. All right, now we're gonna to move to the next hot leg and the neutral. 
right? And again, about 123 volts. So that's exactly what we expect. Uh, we know that we've got the split phase um, coming in here. So um, between the, both the hots and the neutral, we should get about 120 to 125 volts. And then the last thing we want to check here is just go between the neutral and the ground. We want to make sure we don't have any weird voltages there. We really shouldn't have any voltage there. So you can see we've got about 20 millivolts. That's fine. That's, that's basically nothing. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, open that breaker and then we'll move on to the 30 amp breaker and do the same thing. So basically we're gonna again uh, start with the neutral or the hot to neutral. Yep, right, and we should get again about 120-ish volts, 120 to 125. And then we wanna go from the hot to the ground and it should be about the same, um, right? And then we wanna go, just go again from the ground to uh, the neutral just to make sure we don't have any weird voltages there again. I wouldn't expect anything. There we go. Right, so we're good there. We're good on the 30 amp, we're good on the 50 amp, and now we're gonna move on to the 20 amp. The 20 amp's pretty simple. Um, we're just gonna go straight from the um, hot to the neutral, and actually we may have to reset the, um, the trip here on this. Nope, there we go. So again, about 123 volts from the hot to the neutral. And then you can go, you can go again to, um, so that's the neutral to ground that we're looking at. Uh, essentially nothing. So now go from the uh, from the hot to the ground and again we should see about 120 volts. Yep, oh, there it is, right there. Okay, all right, so that's all there really is to, to the checks on, the electrical checks on the pedestal that we're gonna do on our own. Um, now, so the next step is what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug in our surge protector and that surge protector is gonna do some additional tests to let us know that it's safe to plug our rig um, into the pedestal. All right, so what we have is we have a watchdog um, surge protector. Um, this isn't one of the cheaper ones. This is one of the more expensive ones that you can buy, um, but they are very well regarded. Um, and the good thing about these um, surge protectors is if it blows, instead of having to buy a whole new surge protector, um, the only thing you need to buy is a new circuit card that can be easily swapped out. Whenever you're ready, let's just go ahead and plug in the surge protector. And I, I don't know if we'll be able to get the audio on here or see any lights popping up. But when you plug that surge protector in and then shut the, the 50 amp breaker, it should give a little pop when it's ready after it's done all of its, there it goes, after it's done all of its little testing, um, it should give a little pop. So do that one more time so I can try and actually get the pop. Okay, there we go. All right, so now all we're gonna do, all we have left is um, we're gonna plug in the cord, uh, the shore power cord into the surge protector. Um, it's pretty easy, it's hard to mess up. Uh, it's actually impossible to mess up. So we just plug those in together and then the next thing we're gonna do and the last thing is to go inside and shut the breakers to um, the breaker panel. So it's important when you go through this that um, before you start this whole thing, and really when you pull out from the previous campground, you should always open up the uh, the mainline AC breaker in the in the uh, breaker box here. Go ahead, and that way you know that um, you know there won't be any you know accidental transients when you connect to the shore power out there. You know, and you when you shut the breaker. So it's just really technically the safest way to do this. All right, guys, so here, just a couple of final points. Um, so when you're doing all these inspections and these tests, if you run into any weird indications, so if you have a breaker that doesn't seem to want to stay shut firmly, um, or if you have a, an outlet that looks like um, it needs to be replaced, or even when you plug into your surge protector, if you get some kind of weird indications, uh, the first thing you need to do is contact the campground. Um, the first thing you should not do is pick up the phone and call a mobile RV technician because more than likely you're going to waste uh, money paying that guy to come out and tell you that it's a problem with the campground. So again, if you have any issues with any of those things, first thing you should do is call the campground. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this installment of the RV Electrical Series. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like the video if you got anything out of it. And most importantly, make sure you subscribe so we can keep bringing these videos to you. Until next time. We'll see ya.